In this week's walk and talk then, Paris is burning, masses of more job layoffs, the economy is crumbling, the banking crisis is getting worse, people are now paying for their groceries on buy now, pay later plans, and a whole lot of other things to come in this week's video. So let's begin in Paris then, where quite honestly, I don't think I've ever in my entire life seen anything like this that's going on. You could say, well, remember all the uh, riots in the US cities a couple of years ago? Yeah, well, this is maybe not as bad as the looting and burning down of businesses, but it's sort of on par with that because what we've got is these mass, mass protests. Millions of people, not tens of thousands of people like is being portrayed on the media. In fact, if you're watching the mainstream media, you would think that this really isn't that big of a deal millions of people on the streets. Now, let me just clarify one thing because it really depends on what media you watch. Some of the media make out as if nothing really is going on, nothing major, but then you've got others who are on the other side who are making out as if it's the whole of France is rioting and burning down buildings and looting and fighting with police and all this. That's not true either. It is in the millions of people but it's not the whole of France. But it really does look like a war zone over there in Paris right now. And just last night they burned, well, they didn't burn it down. That's what the, some of the media reports have said, that they burned down the Bordeaux town hall. It looked to me as though they set it ablaze at the front. And what I was really surprised by was people who are supposed to be very proud of being French, and yet they would burn down this stunning, absolutely beautiful town hall, set it on fire. And it really is absolutely beautiful. The architecture of it is stunning. And just a reminder what all this is about, Macron decided that he was gonna raise the pension age by two years without a vote, because he knew that the people didn't want it, the politicians didn't want it. So he just did it anyway without a vote, which is undemocratic. I think he got too many ideas from the COVID uh, era and years, and he thought he would just carry that on with all of his emergency powers and things like that now. Well, it's not working because remember, the power is with the people when they protest en masse. And today, this is where we are before we get into the next stories. We're on the Isle of Man. We're at a heritage site, which the majority of people don't even know exists. We're right on the coast, so the wind is outrageous right now. But luckily, I'm a good editor and I've got a good wind blocker. So there shouldn't be too much wind or shake from the camera, even though it's shaking all over the place. Now, what I did find interesting about this, I want to read out some comments that just came out from the UK. So this was Jeremy Hunt. Well, I'll try and read this out anyway. The paper is blowing all over the place. Okay, so he said in the House of Commons, there is an ongoing statutory government review of the state pension age, and that review will need to be carefully balanced important factors, including fiscal sustainability, economic context, the latest life expectancy data, and fairness to both pensioners and taxpayers. I think we know what that means. He's gonna raise the UK pension age, and this will result in exactly what we've seen in Paris, you are gonna see riots on the street if he does this, because people are not gonna stand for it. Similar to the French, the Brits are not gonna stand for this after everything that we've been gone th going through over the last three years, and all the cost of living crisis, the energy stuff, everything that this incompetent government has been doing. And again, remember, I'm not political. I'm not saying the Conservatives are incompetent and Labour's great. I don't care for either of, of the parties because I think politics now is just a big circus. 
And it doesn't matter who you vote for, you're getting the same people every time. Gosh, I did not expect this level of wind today. This was not on the, the weather forecast. But the next one, I know you all wanted me to talk about this, so here, we, here it comes. UK emergency alert system coming on the 23rd of April. So this is kind of a big deal for the Brits. But have you heard this emergency system sound? Let me play it for you now. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of this clip here. Take a listen to this. This is not a test. This is your emergency broadcast system announcing the commencement of the annual purge sanctioned by the US government. Now imagine you're driving down the road, you're operating heavy machinery, <laughs> something like that, and you hear this emergency clip going off. What that, you, I mean, are they, are they, have they thought this thing through? Have they thought this thing through? Because I know exactly what would happen. If I'm driving down the road, I've never heard this before, and my phone starts doing that, goodness me, I'm gonna react straight away, and let's hope we don't have a lot of car accidents and other accidents as a result of this. Now, there's also a lot of rumors from people that you won't be able to use your phone, it disables your phone, until you click OK. So let me tell you the first thing I did. Settings, advanced settings, notification, turn off. Yes, <laughs> that's the first thing I did. What are they going to warn me about that's that much of an emergency? It says on there extreme weather things and you know, there's all these other articles linking to it. Oh, it's everything from climate change and whatever else. Yeah, okay. I'm sure there's gonna be a climatic event that is such a big emergency that I need to know about it there and then. No, I've turned mine off. And I'm wondering if anyone has connected the dots on this, by the way. So we have Russia, Putin, putting out his statement just the other day, furious with the UK for sending uranium, depleted uranium weapons, which are gonna be fired on Russian troops. And he's saying that he will respond in kind. Oh, great, that's wonderful for me who lives on the Isle of Man, just next to, well, right in the middle of the UK, I guess you can say, even though I get all these comments saying, it is the UK, it's not. It is its own country, its own jurisdiction. It's a crown dependency, but anyway. Either way, I'll be in for it as well if he decides to fire some missiles or something like that over, over here. So uh, not appreciated. So either way, I think we now know what this emergency broadcast is all about. They probably knew this from the start and I don't believe it's just for weather. I think this is going to be for uh, military conflict and it will uh, tie in with Operation Mobilize and all these other things that we've been talking about. But the BBC propaganda is on overdrive this week. I've got to sh talk about this in a second. But this Saturday is going to be the first episode of my property renovation show, I guess we can call it. So that will be in the private community. This is just for fun. It's not a sort of doom and gloom or, you know, educational type thing. It's just for fun. I'm going to be showing you me renovating my property. Maybe you can learn from some of the things I'm doing, uh, starting from, you know, right from scratch, ripping the whole thing out and then putting it all back together, uh, bringing it back to a historical state. And then there'll be gardens and growing food and animals and all sorts of other things. So I think it's going to be really cool. So if you want to watch that, it will be in the private community. Now, let's go on to the BBC. So check out this article on screen here. The headline reads, Iraq war 20 years on. I lost my leg, but I do it again. So, okay, ask yourself this. Why would this be a headline news article for the BBC right now? 20 years ago was the Iraq war, I know. I remember it. Why would they be bringing this up again now? I think we know. This is what they do. This is why it's called TV programming. What is a program? You install a program, don't you? So we're seeing all this stuff now about losing legs, losing limbs, war. This is where we're going towards. We talked about this. If you haven't watched yesterday's video, I know it's a long one, but it's a really important one. So please watch that. It will explain everything going on right now. 
Oh, that's much better. This, uh, we've got a windbreak here, so we'll stand here for a minute. The other one that was on the BBC this week, uh, complete nonsense. It said about inflation. Inflation is going to drop this year. Again, even though it's gone up, as I said it would go up, they, they're saying that it's going to come down. And they still think it's 2.9% by the end of the year. They are dreaming. And what they've said is, and this is how crazy it is, they've said that inflation is going to come down for people because the government is going to pay all the energy bills. Nonsense. The government doesn't have any money. It doesn't make money. The government gets its money from the people, the citizens. You think of politicians, what do they actually produce? You think of a, a factory worker. You think of a plumber or a builder. They are all producing something. They're adding to GDP. What does a politician produce? Let me ask you that question. Drop it in the comments below. But they're saying that inflation will go down. Well, let me tell you mathematically, economically, why that's a lie and why it won't happen. Inflation is the expan expansion of the currency supply. That's what it is. So if they're going to print more currency in order to pay the energy bills on behalf of people, what they're doing is they're expanding the currency supply, therefore increasing inflation. So all these measures that the government keeps doing are short-term gain, but extreme long-term pain. So don't believe it. And when you hear Eileen at the supermarket telling you, oh, yes, the government's paying my energy bills and inflation's going to come down. They're so great. Say, actually, Eileen, that's not true. Um, Neil said, and then you just explain that. She probably wouldn't believe it anyway, bless her. But, you know, you've got you to gotta try and educate people where you can. Now, another one in the news this week. Fury, again. The boss of British Gas parent company has angered consumer groups by accepting a 4.5 million pay packet, including bonus payouts totaling 3.7 million, despite an investigation into the treatment of vulnerable, vulnerable customers. Oh, look, I can't even get my words out today. I think it's because I cycled here. It took me about an hour and a half. I did not expect it to take that long. But anyway, I'm not sure that's useless information to you. Yeah, so there's no money to help people and, you know, energy and all this. But there's a lot of money. There's millions to be made in just one bonus there. Goodness me, the world really is upside down. But let's move on now to the job cuts then, the job announcements. This is getting worse and worse all the time. Amazon is about to cut another 9,000 jobs. So this is on top of the 18,000 jobs that they previously did. Meta last week announced plans for another 10,000 jobs. This is on top of the 11,000 they already did. And they've announced a hiring freeze as well. So in total, I've, I've collected up all the data here and I've checked this off against a few websites. Tech firms laid off more than 150,000 workers last year. 139,000 layoffs have already been announced this year. So these are just the biggest companies. It's a lot, lot more than that, but I'm just giving you the big, big ones. And now we've got loads more coming. So Accenture is about to cut 19,000 jobs. Disney has just started cutting their jobs, 7,000. So this is because they've had this string of failures, which I think is self-inflicted. I have no sympathy for them whatsoever. And this was as a result of movies drop, flop in as well. So Lightyear, Strange Worlds, Pinocchio, Ant-Man 3. Oh, I wonder why these have flopped at the box office. I just can't imagine. I, I just can't figure it out. We also have Indeed has announced it's going to axe 15% of its staff Walmart is axing a lot of their staff. Then we have Amigo. So this is this sort of high cost lender where some of the interest rates are up to 49.9%. Um, so I have no sympathy if they go under because that should be illegal for anyone to take on an interest rate of that level. It shouldn't even be allowed. And then we have all these people in the banking sector announcing the crisis is over, everything's fine. And, um, you know, all these bailouts have worked. Let me tell you, these bailouts have not worked. Everything is not fine. I feel like uh, a lone wolf in the wilderness at the moment. Me and Peter Schiff and, I don't know, maybe a couple of other people are the only ones actually saying, no, no, this is going to get worse. This banking crisis isn't over. This inflation crisis isn't over. It is going to get worse. But... 
well, we'll see what happens. In fact, usually in situations like this, you know why they say don't shoot the messenger? It's usually people like me who end up getting it because I sort of told people what's coming and then when it happens, they, they get upset with me. Now, the other big one at the moment, and this is a really good lesson for everyone, is Argentina. So Argentina has now got inflation over 100%. What has the government done? Oh, let's look at this beautiful view behind. This is another thing I like about this island. I just leave my bike anywhere, just leave it. And it's always there when I come back. And my car, I just leave it. <laughs> just leave it open, the window's open. Uh, never have to worry about anything. So Argentina, this was the announcement. The government ordered public sector bodies on Thursday to sell or exchange their holdings of 11 sovereign dollar bonds, so US dollars, in a bid to reorganize debt. Mm. And this is because the foreign reserves have dropped and crashed. And this is the problem that we're seeing in a lot of countries at the moment, it's the US dollar reserves. I really do think there's gonna be an issue and it's just getting worse and worse. This is just a collapse waiting to happen. But it's not just that. Remember what I said, when you, be, when you take an IMF loan, that's a, again when the country is just now a debt slave to the IMF which is a private organization, by the way, just remember that. I actually heard that if you're a worker, I don't know if this is true, but someone said to me that if you're a worker there, you get a diplomatic passport, and if you commit crimes and all sorts, then you can't be arrested. I wonder if that's true, because that's absolutely outrageous if that, that is true. Someone find out and drop it in the comments. Because they have $44 billion loan to the IMF, and they're saying that th there's a problem because of grain sales and high, global prices and, oh, here we go. I knew they'd come out with this one. Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine. Why does everything have to get blamed when it's a monetary crisis on Russia and Ukraine? How can 100% inflation be from Russia and Ukraine in Argentina? It doesn't make any, there's no correlation, but they all just keep blaming this. It was a bit like, do you remember during all the lockdowns when there was, you know, loads of problems going on, or let's say my internet wasn't working, and I would call up, sorry, not the lockdowns, after the lockdowns, when everything was back to normal, and I'd say, why is the internet not working? And they would say, I'm really sorry, sir, COVID. And I'd say, okay, but why is my internet not working? Because of COVID. I'd be like, what's that got to do with my internet? Are you saying the engineers are off with COVID? Oh, sir, sir, you, you, you've been unreasonable here. I'm like, no, no, explain. What is the correlation? And you see, a lot of them can't do it. They keep using all these excuses because people don't really look into it. Now, I honestly think Argentina is going to join BRICS. I do. And that will be very interesting if that happens. Let me just tell you a little history lesson on, in Argentina here. Because Argentina... If you think of the early 20th century, it was one of the richest countries. It was richer than Germany, richer than France, GDP-wise per, per person, was on par with Canada. I mean, it was much richer than Spain and a lot of other countries. Argentina, there was a, even an expression about as rich as an Argentinian. Like they were a very wealthy country. And then between sort of 1930 and 1980, they, they really just, it just collapsed as a, a nation, as it were. So their standard of living saw a massive drop. And I'm saying this is a lesson for you watching this because most of you watching are in the West. And I think you might get a shock over the next 10 years and then further out as the standard of living drops. And again, I'm not gonna go over it again because I've done it in lots of videos. You can watch back and, and find the information, but you need energy for a country to prosper. And we've also prospered because of lower cost labor and US dollars being exported, when all these dollars come back, you're gonna see inflation like you cannot even imagine right now. I gave you a lot of statistics yesterday on the USA. It is, it is set for some major, major issues. Honestly, and I'm not saying this to be controversial, but I just don't think there's any way out of this challenge now for America. I don't, I think it's peaked. I think the civilization did very well for a long period of time, but I do believe it's peaked. Again, I'm not saying that to be rude because I know many of you are American watching, but it's just economics, it's just mathematics. Because just some of the, the statistics today were, were shocking that I, uh, I was reading. So buy now, pay later services grew by 40% in USA just in the last three months, 40%. So people 
have burned through their savings. They then burn through credit cards. They've burned through loans. And now they're having to use buy now, pay later. That is the state of the USA. And if you look at how many Americans, and this is the baby boomer generation, by the way, are now unable to afford retirement, it is a shocking number. So again, this is not looking positive at all. But I'll tell you two positive stories that came out overnight. Number one is that Ted Cruz has introduced an anti-central bank digital currency bill. So that is positive news. He is, of course, a governor in Texas. And there's also another bill that's been um, launched by the Republicans at the moment to overturn the gas stove ban. So if you have a gas stove, if you, again, I've done a video on it, you can, you can watch it on the channel. So there's now a policy in place to overturn that ban. I'm actually going to be getting a wood stove installed very soon and I will let you know about that once it's done. Maybe I can do a short video on it or, or something like that and my wood burners and, and everything else because I'm not naive to this. Yeah, I could, you know, put my head in the sky, pie in the sky thinking, but honestly, I'm just accepting what's coming and I'm preparing for a different standard of living as we go forward. Oh, look at these beautiful daffodils behind here. And the gorse is blooming. So this gorse was actually brought to the island a long, long time ago. There's a lot of interesting stuff on this island, very historic and ancient, like the site we were just walking around there. Again, very ancient site. But the gorse was actually brought here and it was used to line all of the the hedgerows and, and the walls and everything else a long time ago now. So thanks for being a subscriber here. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate all of you. And I mean that. I just want to say thank you for your support, whether you buy my courses or join my Patreon or whatever else you do, share these videos. Um, I really appreciate it. So thanks a lot. I'm going to get on my bike now behind and I'm going to cycle home. All right, take care. God bless.